أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بفضل الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله أجمعين محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين Before I begin, if I could just ask all the younger brothers to come to the front, come close to come and sit at the front. If that's all right. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Just makes it easier to to listen, inshallah. قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما وليكم الله ورسوله والذين آمنوا الذين يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة وهم راكعون صدق الله العلي العظيم Of the many verses that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has revealed about Imam Ali عليه السلام Some sources say that it's up to 1,000 verses or more than 1,000 verses in the Holy Qur'an that Allah revealed regarding Imam Ali alayhi salam. And in fact, in nearly every verse, you will find something that links the Imam in almost every verse to, to the point that some of the companions used to complain and say, is this whole book about your cousin? Is this whole thing about your cousin? They didn't like the idea that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned his cousin that much. And in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about guardianship or wilaya and he speaks about the guardianship of himself Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet he says surely or verily your guardians are Allah and his holy prophet and the ones who have faith the believers aman, the ones who uphold the prayer and they give charity while they are in prayer specifically in the state of Ruku'ah and so the story is that one day Imam Ali alayhi salam was in the mosque in Masjid Rasulullah and he was praying and a man came and asked for charity and while the Imam was praying he was in the state of Ruku'ah he put his fingers forth and the man took the ring from the hand of the Imam and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down this verse in recognition of the Imam. When the other companions heard about this event, many of them wanted to do a similar thing or the same thing. So following nights or days, they would be praying in the mosque and they started putting multiple rings on their fingers just in case somebody comes so they could give a ring and perhaps a verse may be brought down in their favor or in their name. But they missed the whole point of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And the whole point is the point of taqwa. In fact, in any verse in the Holy Quran, take Surah Al-Baqarah for example. In the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Mim, Thalik al-Kitab la rayba fihi hudan lil muttaqin. That this book, there, within this book, there is no doubt that it is a guidance for the muttaqin, for the pious. Who is the source of the pious and the best of the pious? Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, without a doubt. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Alladina. يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون the ones who believe in the unseen the ones who uphold the prayer the ones who give the charity all of this is Amir al-Mu'minin all of these things are Amir al-Mu'minin he is the exemplar the ultimate specimen of all of these attributes it always goes back to Amir al-Mu'minin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the example of Habil and Qabil and we've mentioned this many a time that both of them offer a sacrifice however Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only accepts from Habil because in the maya taqabal Allah min al muttaqin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only accepts from the ones who are pious and thus Imam Ali alayhi salam's actions sallallahu alayhi Muhammad wa ali Muhammad was accepted and given such praise only because that he did it with piety he did it wholeheartedly and because he did it wholeheartedly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted it and immortalized it and he acted upon something 
which was difficult for others. If you think about it, Imam Ali alayhi salam, he used to go out in the night and search for the poor to give them something. If anybody comes and asks you for something, generally we judge the person. Immediately someone says, I want some money, you judge him. He doesn't look like he needs money. Maybe he's lying. Maybe There's a million questions that you ask. Sometimes you want to ask him before you decide how much you give them. So then you begin to think, with my intention, how much do I really believe that I'm giving for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much of it is really that I'm just giving, that uh, giving it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, he says, Tajiru ma'allah bis sadaq. That the best, to be a merchant with Allah by giving sadaq. Because with sadaq there's returns, this is an investment for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained this. So give that money freely, however, how freely do we give it? And imagine the imam during prayer. During prayer, someone comes to ask, without even thinking twice, he gives the ring that is on his finger. Now this ring, whatever the value of this ring is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But the way he freely gives, and during the prayer, without scrutiny, that in fact afterwards Rasulullah asks him when he sees him as a beggar, he says to him, has anyone given you? He says, yes, there was a man that was praying, and while he was in Ruku, he... Uh, opened his hand so I could see his, the, the ring on his finger and I took that ring. So the way that the Imam gives, this is the difference. The intention, this is the difference. The fact that he gives wholeheartedly and the fact that he has taqwa. The concept of justice is a concept, an ideal, idealistic concept that we're all familiar with. We all love justice. It's something that's inherent. It's within us that we love justice to be around. And in fact, we believe our politicians and our leaders time and time again when they promise justice. Even when they're lying, we believe them. We love it and we tell them, please, give us this justice. Whatever the flavor of the day is, you see, this is what they speak about. One of the U.S. presidential candidates, she went to a rally on equality wearing an $18,000 jacket, Armani jacket, and she's talking about equality, about the disparity between the rich and the poor and the classes. How can she have the nerve to speak about quality? Equality, عفوًا, equality, when she's wearing an $18,000 jacket. They show photos of her going into a normal house. You know, even look at our presidential candidates, when they, our prime, prime ministerial candidates. When they go on tour southwest Sydney, when they, go, when they go out towards western Sydney, they have a full film crew with them. And they all come and say, look, they're out in western Sydney, Allahu Akbar. You know, they left their house in Potts Point, in the richest area, and they've gone to western Sydney. This is a huge thing. Let us film them. It reminds me once we were on the uh, walking to Karbala from Najaf in the Arba'in. And as we're walking, just walking along and whatever we're doing, getting tired, can't, waiting to get there. And then I see these four GMCs rock up. They stop. These guys jump out, US trained. They're holding their AR-15s, their glasses, and every kit looks like they walked out of Call of Duty, you know. And they're holding their weapons, and then this Muammam walks out. Gets out of the GMC, they all stand around him, she shakes a few hands, he walks around a little bit, God forbid, he won't even taste the food there. And then he jumps back into his GMC. Surely these, maybe it's my sultan, but these photos and these footage that he got, they're going to say, look, Muhammad so-and-so was with us. They jump back into the GMC and, and off they go. What sort of an example is this? Why would I even vote for this guy? Why would I even vote for those guys? But the thing is, in our hearts, we wish that we could have this justice. Or we wish that we could get a taste of this justice. The problem is... That justice is only going to be as good as what we are. The problem is that we train our children and we teach ourselves. I mean, have a look at this place. Last night, mashallah, it was full. Tonight we see people, there's parents here that they didn't bring their children down. It's the parents' responsibility to bring their children with them, to make sure that their children come. Where else are your children going? And when I say children, I mean if they're living under your roof. If they're living under your roof, they should obey what you say and come down. Why? When they don't come to these majalis, this is only one short month and it's only a few nights that we're going through and after the 23rd night we probably won't see many people here except for the ones that, you know, the, the committed ones. But the point is we're not teaching them the correct perception and understanding of justice then how can they understand what the true justice is that they want? When we don't enact this in our house, on these nights this is why we come. To speak about Imam Ali alayhi salam to speak about the epitome of justice, the essence of justice. And understand this justice from the holy Imam Salamullahi Alaihi. You read the narrations, there's a narration of uh, Suwaid ibn Ghafla. And Suwaid ibn Ghafla, he says that I entered 
I went to see Imam Ali alayhi salam and I saw him sitting on a rug, on this very cheap rug in his house. And I said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, Anta Malak al-Arab, Malak al-Muslimin, Afwan, you are the king of the Muslims. The wufud come to you, the delegations come and visit you and you're sitting on this rug. How can it be? And so he says to him, and he, and he says, and under your hand is Baytul Mal. The money of the Muslims, all of the money, and by that time they had collected so much money and had that much wealth, the Islamic Empire, that how can it be that you're just sitting on this rug? And so he says to him, قَالَ يَا إِنَّ اللَّبِيب لَا يَتَأَثَّثْ فِي ذَارِ النُّقْلَ He says, certainly the one who is a labib, meaning someone who is uh, intellectual and thoughtful and understanding, does not buy new furniture in a transient house. But this is a house that he's living in and he's going to move from, why should I put furniture in it? And then he says, وَأَمَامَ نَضَارَ الْمَقَامَ وَقَدْ نَقَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا مَتَاعَنَا وَنَحْنُ مُنْقَلِبُونَ إِلَيْهَا عَنْ قَرِيبٌ So uh, Suwaid says, I began to cry. He says to him, I have already moved all of my furniture to my next house. And this is the house that I'm going to remain in, meaning the hereafter. And very soon I shall go to that house. This is a leader. That this leader is sitting there, all he has is a rug. He says in another narration, nobody can handle this, obviously, of us. And Imam Ali Islam tells us himself that, that uh, he says, وَلَا تَطِيقُونَ ذَلِكَ أَوْ لَا تَسْتَطِعُونَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ وَلَكِنْ أَعِينُونِي بِوَرَعٍ وَاشْتِهَادٍ He says that you will not have the ability over this, however, help me by abstaining from sin and by striving towards this. And so, when you see this and this leader and this justice, imagine you are the poorest person, you would be proud that this is my leader. Even if you are a rich person, you would be proud that this is your leader. That this is all he has. This is all he, he, in another tradition, Suwaid enters the palace because the Qasr was still there next to the mosque, Qasr al-Imara in the Kufa. But the Imam refused to live in it. In fact, he rented a house and that house stands till today. It was a, he didn't even own the house. But that house remains till today and now they've, uh, they've fixed it up and they've expanded it. But that position where the house was, this is where he lived in a rented house and he was the Khalif. He was the leader, he was the emperor. I mean, if you look at modern day emperors or quasi emperors, people who believe they are emperors, you know, in, in the United Kingdom, outside of the palace of the queen, there's a certain road that, just, that, that is just painted red. So it looks like red carpet. So when she drives, God forbid, she drives on black tarmac. She has to drive on red painted tarmac. The Imam is sitting there with this rug. He says, I enter another time to the Imam, I enter the palace. He goes, before I get close to the Imam, I can smell the laban that he's eating, the hamudah of the laban, that it smells lemony. You know, when, when milk starts to go a little bit old. So in other words, it's not even fresh milk. It's not fresh yogurt the Imam is eating, that it's getting old. Imagine with us, we just see best by day or used by day and it's gone. And this guy, the Imam sallallahu alayhi has all of the wealth that you could imagine, all of the money that you could imagine, and yet he sits there. And he's having this yogurt that's almost gone off and he's having barley bread. He says, I could see the strain on the face of the Imam as he was trying to break the bread. A time he would try and break it in his mouth and one time he would try and break it on his leg. And so he says, I looked around and I saw Fudda, who is the, the servant. And he says to her, Wayhaki, Ala tattaqeen Allah. Do you not have piety of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You were giving this shaykh this food? And she says to him, he doesn't allow us to give him any other food than this. So Imam Ali salam tells him, join me, come and join in this food. And Abu Suwaid says, I don't want to eat this food. And so the Imam says to him, that I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Look at the Imam and the intention of the Imam and the heart of the Imam with these words. He goes, I heard Rasulullah, he says, I can't eat. Suwaid says to him, I can't eat because I'm fasting. And so the Imam says to him, Sama'atu Rasulullah. He says, I heard Rasulullah say that if someone is fasting and he stops himself from a food that he loves to eat, min ta'am in that there's a food that he loves to eat, he stops himself, فَأَطْعَمَهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ تَعَامِ الْجَنَّةِ وَشَرَابِهَا So he tells him that if there's a food that you love to eat and you stop yourself, Allah will feed you from the food of heaven and the drink of heaven. If Suwaid didn't even want to eat that food, 
And yet this is the food of the Imam. Fudda says that this is what he requests. We can't give him other than this. Look at the justice of the Imam. Look at how just he is. We live in a time today. Do you know there's certain drinks that they make where they get water from an iceberg from the, from the Antarctic and they get the ice and then they melt it and that ice hasn't been liquefied in 50,000 years and then they get that liquid and then they make some alcoholic drink or whatever they make from it people with money eat gold they literally eat food and they lace it with golden flakes not that it tastes any better but they're eating gold that's it they're happy that they're eating gold they look for the finest and the freshest foods and fresher and fresher and today we do the same thing in the name of health we say in the name of health I'm eating organic I'm eating super organic the sheep that, I've, that I'm eating have got a degree otherwise I won't eat them and this is what they do we try and find the freshest and the best and this is Imam Ali alayhi salam the best of the best of people the most just look what he's eating and he thinks he invites Suwaid thinking that Suwaid might even enjoy or want of this food the justice of the Imam it's so important how just he was. You look in Waqa'at al-Jamal or Harb al-Jamal. When that lady, she marched a whole army against Imam Ali alayhi salam. They went into the Basra. They took the governor of the Basra. They tortured him. They plucked out his beard with their hands. Then he went to the Imam. The Imam said, I sent you to the Basra with a full beard. Where's your beard gone? He said, they ripped it out with their hands when they kicked me out. They end up going into battle. They defeat them. So Imam Ali defeats these people. They say between three and 30,000 people were killed in this war. One of the, I think this was probably the second civil war, but they name it the first civil war in Islam because they don't count the Ridda Wars. Because the Ridda Wars, which were the wars straight after the, when, the, when the first Khalif took power, his move was smarter than his daughter's move. Because his move, what he said, is that these people have gone against Islam, so we're fighting non-Muslims, so it doesn't get counted as a civil war. But the Battle of Jamal got counted as a civil war. Why? Because it was a war for vengeance of the death of Uthman. So they called that the first civil war in Islam. But the other one was a civil war without a doubt. However, because of the name of it and the, and the way they labeled it. So we get to Imam Ali alayhi salam. He finishes the war. Once the war ends, he gets the lady off the camel. And then he sends her with an escort of 40 or 80 women to escort her back to her house in Medina, untouched, unharmed. And then he says, everyone that fought against me is free. They're all free. Talha is free. Zubair is free. He enters the Basra, he says, whoever enters their house is safe. Whoever drops their sword is safe. Don't kill anybody. Don't harm anybody. And then he walks and he enters the, the citadel basically of Basra. He walks into the treasury and he sees it filled with gold. So much gold. And he begins to look at it and say, Ghurri ghayri, ghurri ghayri, ghurri ghayri. Delude other than me, delude other than me. In other words, fool other than me. Oh gold, all of this gold. This is where the famous saying, Ya Baidha, Ya Safra, Ghurri ghayri, comes along. And he says, Oh white, as in O oh, silver and O oh, gold, delude other than me. That this is not for me. He says, then he tells his companion that is with him. He says, give it out to all of the men that took part in this battle. 500 by 500. Give them 500 dirhams each or 500 dinars each. He says, 500 by 500 each one. And the man says, for Allah, there was 12,000 of us. And there was 6 million dinars. He says, and they were exact. There wasn't a dinar left. 500 by 500. Just from one look, the Imam knew exactly how much money is to go to each. And then the Imam receives his, cut, his 500. And a man comes up to him. Just imagine this scenario, honestly. man comes up and he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I didn't take part in the battle, but my heart was with you. This is a battle where people were dying. People were getting cut up. Imagine someone comes and they want to benefit in the accolades. of, of uh, Benefit in, in what you've got. And you paid blood for it. And you were Amir al-Mu'mineen, with one word, this guy disappears. Well, Imam Ali alayhi salam, what does he do? He says, give him my 500. It's yours. And Imam Ali takes nothing. Not a bit from the war booty. What is this justice? Who is this, this being that you look at? 
The justice of the Imam was so great because he would stop himself from the things that he used to delight in or people would see that he would delight in when they offered him something sweet to eat what did he say he says akhaf an yaqula li yawm al qiyamah adhabtum tayyibatikum fi hayatikum ad dunya i fear that on the day of judgment they say to me that you've taken what's good in this dunya and it's gone of the most beautiful ahkam of imam ali alayhi salam short sayings he's got these sayings that are just mind boggling very short but that's it they're completely fulfilling and how else could they come from other than him? Halawat al dunya, mararat al akhira. Wa mararat al dunya, halawat al akhira. What is bitter in this world is sweet in the hereafter. And what is sweet in this world is bitter in the hereafter. Full stop. He's just summarized the whole thing in this one sentence sweet and bitter. Imam Ali alayhi salam, the Holy Prophet used to say about him, Akdaqum Ali, that he is the most. He is, the, he is the best of judgment and the best in judgment. In fact, he was so good in judgment that all of the time they would call him whenever there was a problem. And it was fam the famous saying of Ibn al-Khattab, he said, لَوْلَا Ali لَهَلَكَ Umar." Famous saying of Uthman ibn Affan many a time, not once. لَوْلَا Ali لَهَلَكَ Uthman." Or they would say, may Allah never leave us to a problem where we cannot get Ali ibn Abi Talib Because every issue that they had, they would call the Imam and the Imam would solve the issue. We, we, you could sit here, you could write volumes about these issues that used to come towards the Imam. So one day, a man, they bring a man, this is, look at the rule of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Someone goes to war with him. Someone goes to war with him. And he allows him to be free. He attacks and he says, you're free. Even one of them, he ran away from the battle of Jamal. Imam Ali caught up with him later in the Kufa. And they grabbed him and said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, we've got him. The Imam says, let him go. That's it. It's over. He's finished. Let him go. And then look in the rule of the other guy. Remind, I just remember the story. This is narrated in their books. One day, Khalid bin Walid, he was, he was uh, walking with his army. He had his whole army with him because they used to get him to lead armies. I don't know why. This, if you if you hear the, the truth about what this person was, they call him like he was a, he was a soldier and a great warrior. But there's there's a long story where one, one day he actually he plotted to kill Imam Ali alayhi salam. And uh, but it's a long story. Maybe we'll go through it uh, uh, another night. It's, it's actually it's a nice story, but it shows you what. Khalid bin Walid really is. So Khalid bin Walid is walking with his army and they reach a river. This is in the time of the Khilafah of the, uh, the second Khalif. They reach a river and Khalid bin Walid is unsure of the depth of the river. So he looks around at his soldiers and the young soldiers are strong. He says, grab the old, old guy. There's an old man. He goes, walk through the river. Let's see how deep it is. Look at this guy. Seriously. <laughs> like, what is this guy? He sends the old man through the river. The old man starts walking through. And the river gets too deep, the old man can't swim, he begins to drown, so he shouts out, Ya Umar! He was in the second Khalif, and he drowns, and he dies. And they say that Umar was back in the Medina, and he heard it, and he said, I, I, you know, I, feel, a, I feel a weakening in the force, you know? As if Alderaan has just been destroyed. He felt, he felt a weakening. And, uh, and this is it. Have you ever heard of anyone in your life, say, Ya Ali, and they fail? Or say, Ya Ali, and they lose? This guy called out and this one, he drowned. That's it. I mean, the whole story has no moral. It's typical of the history books that we have. The, but the point is, this is just to give you an example. And it's not that it makes Imam Ali greater when we look at these. But these people claim to be the leadership compared to that. And so, with Amir al-Mu'mineen, one day, at the time of the second Khalif, they catch a guy. This is how they are. Imam Ali is letting people off. He's, he's, he's allowing them to be free. People that come up to him, there was a story where a lady came up to him and she said, I've committed adultery. He said to her, go away. She came back, I've committed adultery, go away. <laughs> this man, look at this, this is, he, he allows her to go, be free. Don't bring me, don't force it upon me that I have to judge upon. Don't force it upon me. Allah, go and ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let it be. They bring a man to Umar ibn al-Khattab, why? Because they asked him, well, that man was a companion of the Holy Prophet, they asked him, Kayf asbahat? I'm sure you've heard this. 
That imagine they just said to me, you know, good morning, top of the morning to you, dear fellow. And he answered to them. He says, Asbahtu akrah. He goes, Ahab al fitna wa akrah al haq. Wa usaddik al yahud wa nasara wa min bima lam ara wa akur bima bima yukhlaq. So he says, uh, they say to him, how are you, how are you this morning? Or basically, uh, is, the, is, the, is the greeting, basically good morning. But he answered to them that I love mischief and I hate the haq, I hate the truth. And I believe the Jews and the Christians. And I believe in what I see not. I have faith in what I see not. And I believe continually in what has not been created yet. So they say, oh, pagan unbeliever, take him to Umar, let's punish him. Imagine that. The guy just said a statement, let him say a statement and walk off. But they bring him and they say, we want judgment. So Omar looks at him and says, I'm baffled. Like This guy, what should we do? Should we whip him? Should we call Abu Hassan? So they call Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Ali alayhi salam comes up and they say to him, this is what he said. The Imam says, of course. He said what's true. He says, فَقَالَ صَدَقْ يَحِبُّ الْفِتْنَةِ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, He loves mischief. He says, wa fitna. That verily, your children and your wealth are a mischief, they're a fitna. And He loves the fitna. Who doesn't love the fitna? We all love our money and our children. And He says to him, That death is true, and every, nobody likes death. Who loves death? He says, and he believes the Yahud and the Nasara, he believes the Jews and the Christians. So he says, he believes them in the Quran, Allah says that the Jews said the Christians have nothing, the Christians say the Jews have nothing, so both of them are true. And he says, and he believes without, he does not see. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we all believe in Allah and we do not see him. And he believes in what has not been created, and this is the Sa'ah, the day of judgment, Yawm al Qiyamah. And so the man is freed. But look how one frees the people that you think should be judged and the other catches people for a random word that they've said. What sort of a dictatorship are they living in under the second khalif? And so there's a small story about the qada of Imam Ali alayhi salam. There's a few more. Inshallah, maybe we'll discuss some tomorrow night. But we'll finish with this, the sound just judgment of the Imam. Alayhi. Two ladies... Are brought towards the second khalif. One of them has given birth to a boy and the other has given birth to a girl. And both of them are claiming the boy. And so they go to the second khalif. The second khalif says, I don't know what to do. He says, you know what? And they say, should we call Abul Hassan? He says, of course. This has happened so many times. So they go, they want to call Imam Ali. Imam Ali alayhi salam, they find him busy so they come to his house. And the second Khalif says to Imam Ali alayhi salam, what do I do? There's these two and they're both claiming that the son is theirs, one's had a boy, one's had a girl, one is, which is for which? And Imam Ali alayhi salam, they say, he's standing next to a wall in his house and he's reciting a verse from the Holy Quran, أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانَ أَنْ يَتْرُكَ سُدَى says, does the human being thinks that, think that he will be left alone, neglected in Surah Al-Qiyamah? And he stops and he looks at uh, the second khalif and he picks up a stone and he says to him, your problem is easier than, than me picking up this stone, solving this problem. And he says, how so? He says, tell each of the women to express some milk into a container. Tell the first one, so he brings the first one and he weighs the milk. He brings the second one and he weighs the milk. He says, the milk that is heavier and more dense for the same amount, give her the daughter. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given different things for the male and the female. The male gets more inheritance, the male gets the strength of intellect, the female gets a lesser inheritance, the female gets the strength of emotion with her intellect, and the female also you will find the milk is more dense and heavier. And thus he gives the daughter to the one with the heavier milk and the son to the one with the lighter milk. Sallallahu Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. These are just flashes. These are just flashes of the life of a middle mu'minin and the justice of the Amir and the life of the Amir. And the point is for us to listen to this and to sort of take with it. Because maybe we don't command the country, we don't command the nation. But for us we have our own families in our own house. To show some of that justice, that look at the way the Amir used to live his life just to make sure that nobody even felt bad. 
that nobody ever even felt that they were hard done by. And he would give that justice and he would rule with the best and the fairest and the most just of the rule. And this is so important for us to, to understand this from the Imam and to take these from the Imam and to increase our love for the Imam. For verily as Rasulullah said about Imam Ali alayhi salam that he is Al-Faruq Al-A'zam. You know they stole the names of Imam Ali. Even the names they didn't let him keep his names. He is Al-Faruq Al-A'zam. He is As-Siddiq Al-Akbar. And Al-Faruq Al-A'zam they ask at the time of Harun Al-Abbasi Imam Rida alayhi salam is asked or that uh, Imam Rida is uh, or at the time of Ma'mun sorry he is asked that what is meant Ma'mun asks him what is meant by Imam Ali being Al-Faruq Al-A'zam Qasim Al-Jannati wa nar and he says to him that in the days of the Prophet if people wanted to know if their children are good they would bring him to, to Imam Ali and ask do you love this man and if the child said yes then he was good and he will be good and if the child said no then they knew that he would be bad or there would be no the child was legitimate or if the child was illegitimate and so when he leaves one of the companions of the Imam asks but this is not what you have taught us he says this is the answer for al Ma'mun. however on the day of judgment Imam Ali alayhi salam will be there and he will take some people and say these are mine in other words paradise and he says to the hellfire the rest are yours Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our holy Imam Ashallah Fajr Sharif. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure our sick and have mercy on our dead and to allow us to take this leader of ours as a role model and a figure and to absorb, inshaAllah, of his attributes and enact these attributes within our lives. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين رحم الله من قرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة وأهدى ثوابها إلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات تصبق الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد